Um, hope everyone's doing okay. Hey, Regina. And uh, this is uh, going to be a, uh, a... You're right, Jeanette. It's going to be an interesting live. Um, I had been trying to figure out the the exact approach I wanted to go with this and after much note taking and referencing and questioning people and asking folks about the Freemasons, I have I had thought I was gonna go at it from one perspective until this morning. Until this morning, and then I started looking into something else and it took the whole show in a completely different direction. And so I'll still talk about the original point, but not as emphatically as I will the second point that popped up this morning, because I do believe that what popped up this morning is of greater import than the prior version of the show I was going to do. So first, thank you all for being here. Um, thanks for all those who are tuning in on Facebook and those that will eventually arrive on it like it is on YouTube. Um, it's going to be a heavier one, I think. Um, mostly because there's a lot of points to cover. Um, but the main uh, the main problem I have with the Freemasonry movement is going to come after I give all the uh, other information out. Um, so I wanted to uh, tackle this for a myriad of reasons. Um, one of them is the constant swirling of information that people are saying that the Freemasons are really the ones that are behind most of the stuff. They've had their hands in everything and they're everywhere. And after talking to a few people, um, some with some close ties to the movement and some who are in it. Um, the problem, I think, is going to lie more on the upper echelon of the movement, not the first tier and even, you know, a third level Mason. I'm talking about the upper, upper ones are the ones that are probably the most problematic ones. And so what I'm going to approach it from is the, the origin, which we don't really know for sure, but we have a kind of slight time frame of when they really came to prominence. Um, we're going to talk about some of their symbolism. And at the tail end, I'm going to give you the take I came up with this morning, not on my own. I have no doubt that God put this one in front of me because I would have never made this connection otherwise. Um, no matter how much researching I did, I would have never come across this connection had it not, if it wasn't God doing it. So. I want to make that clear. I'm not intelligent by any stretch of the imagination when it comes to this. I was just looking at something and he showed me this particular link. And when I ran it down, it obviously, if he showed it, it's going to make sense. So followed it and made sense. Um, the Freemasons are a group that are steeped in quasi-religious backgrounds and um, they do have a link to some sort of a ritualistic religious connection, but they don't really follow any true tenet of Christianity, Muslim, Jewish, nothing. They don't have a tenet that they follow. Um, they seem to have a connection to what they consider a higher being. They don't really say what that is. Um, they don't allow people who don't believe in a higher being um, into their order. They don't allow women to be fully recognized in their order. Um, and they've been around in terms of prominence as more documented and more prominently around the 1700s. Um, there is no snacks today. This is my show. Snacks is not on today. The snacks and the rest of the guys are on on Wednesdays at noon. The rest of the time, it'll be just me. Sorry to disappoint. And <laughs> just, 
destiny. Um, you will know that they came to a lot of positive kind of I ideals when people like uh, Nicolas Cage did the whole national treasure thing and they tried to link them to the whole um, Declaration of Independence and all that stuff to do with the founding of America, which they're not too far off. Um, they did indeed have their hands in, in all of that. Um, when I look at them, they have um, this face of we do good for people. And like I said, that might be for like the first couple of steps in. But past that point, they keep their things quite secretive. And I, I, once you start doing that, you, you're telling me that you have something to hide. You, you, you're trying to, to mask something from real people. And I can't trust you. They say they encourage uh, clarity, morality, and obedience to laws. Um, and they're based in truth, relief, and brotherly love. Um, they have quite a tier system, and the top one being the 33rd degree. And they go in degrees because of the whole, you know, link between the masonry um, craft and... Um, I, I, I believe, this is not something that they say, this is something I believe, that they picked that number specifically because of what I'm going to talk about later. Um, the relationship it has with um, the archetype of Jesus and the significance of the number three in the Bible. I think they have a a reason for doing that, um, but I will get to I will get that to that in a minute. Um, they date all the way back to almost nine twenty four A.D. Um, had some links with the Knights Templar and the whole Crusaders movement. Um, they came to prominence a lot during World War One, and II, um, really big in, in, in Britain, in England, in Scotland, in Ireland. When they are the ones that are in America, there's, a, there's, there's multiple lodges that they have and all of them have a different distinct way of operating. They all follow the pretty much the same tenet, but they don't really adhere except for the fact that you can't have women and that there are certain things you have to follow when you come in and say that you have to believe the higher being. All of them go through a different um, pathway of how they do it, but they all kind of stick to that one, one central theme. Um, they picked, I, in my belief, they picked um, the masonry idea not on their own accord. I don't think they stumbled and called themselves the Freemasons for any ill reason. Um, and that's the point where I, I come into my new take on it. Um, but I won't, I won't touch on it. I just want you to know that's where it's going to be coming in, this whole concept of Freemasonry and um, what it really seems to mean. I wanted to go through a list of people who have been known to be um, and are known Freemasons and not just regular Freemasons. These are Freemasons that have had their hands in pretty uh, higher places and influential. George Washington, Richard Pryor, Clark Gable, Don Rickles, Ben Franklin. Jesse Jackson, Franklin Roosevelt, Andrew Jackson, John Wayne, Theodore Roosevelt, Harry Houdini, Ernest Borgnine, Mel Blanc, Gerald Ford, Count Basie, Thurgood Marshall, William Taft, Mozart, Mark Twain, Glenn Ford, Will Rogers, Gene Autry, Nat King Cole, Duke Ellington, Kipling, J. Edgar Hoover, Douglas Fairbanks, Beethoven, Winston Churchill, Franz Liszt, 
Buzz Aldrin. That name you should keep in mind, too. Buzz Aldrin. Casanova, Henry Ford, James Garfield, Truman. Those are just a short list of big time provable Freemasons. I had heard talks about Donald Trump being one, and I've been looking to find actual proof of it, other than off-handed symbolistic hand gestures and stuff like that. I have not. I heard that his father might have been one. I have not found proof of that yet, and that might be because they might be higher up. Could be. Um, but I have not, and I won't be naming names that I don't believe are. Um, so yes, I, I am. Thank you for bringing that up. Um, um, it's, it's, uh, the whole dynamic of this group, like I said, in the upper echelons of them. They seem to tend to want to create for the world a, a system that seems to say it works and it's peaceful and it's helpful for everybody. But the symbols don't seem to suggest that at all in my, in my estimation. Um, we're going to go through a, a list of some of the uh, symbols that they have taken under their Movement, acacia, the all-seeing eye, the square and compass, the letter G, cable toe, the Masonic blazing star, the Masonic gavel, Masonic lamb, lambskin apron, anchor, and the ark, ark of the covenant, Masonic shoe, the beehive, coffins, Masonic sheaf of corn, 47th problem of Euclid, Masonic pavement. Now, the ones I want you to pay attention to um, in specific are the following, and I'll write them down with you. The uh, Masonic pavement. Okay, that's one. Um, the uh, all-seeing eye. And then the other one is the, um, the, their name itself, the, the idea of a, of a mason, okay, stones. So, as it continues, trestle board, two-headed eagle, that's another one. Two Masonic pillars, the moon, the Masonic trowel, King Solomon's temple, the Masonic hourglass, the scythe, the 24-inch gauge, the level, the Masonic keystone, points within a circle, the broken column, the Masonic pencil, the number seven, rough and perfect Ashler. The symbols are important, and it's not just important because they have ties to some Illuminati and all that. I, look, I get that that's a, I get that, but that's not, that's not the bigger picture. It really isn't. Um, and I keep trying to tell people that you have to look at what they are trying to do, not exactly what they're trying to say. Look at what they're trying to do. So you have these, this group, this group called the Freemasons. Not just the Masons, but the Freemasons. They have their hands in just about every political movement you have from America to England to Ireland, everywhere. They have their hands. Africa, they have their hands everywhere. And like I said, I'm talking about the upper echelon of the Freemasons. Some say they've been responsible for the collapse of the world. Some say they've been responsible for many deaths of leading people that have been trying to change. They have um, Regina. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you a little bit of a heads up. If anyone in this chat knows anything about, about the Masons, it's going to be Derek. I'm going to, I'm going to politely ask you to defer your supposed knowledge about it to Derek. And I'm dead serious about this because if you, 
you think you've done your research. You have not done research because I know Derek and I know what Derek is about and who he knows, what he knows, how closely he knows it. And trust me, I do not believe you as a female would know as much about the Freemasons as Derek would know. And I'm not saying that as a sexual misogynistic thing. Then Freemasons are a male oriented group. When I tell you, just trust me on this, Regina, this is not a dog to you. This is not me putting you down. Trust me when I say, if there is anyone in this chat right now, that you have to listen to when he says something about the Freemasons, it's going to be Derek. If anybody in this chat has any info worth listening to about the Freemasons, it's going to be Derek. Trust, just trust me on this one. Defer to him when he says something about them. Okay? This is me trying to help people in the audience understand who has knowledge and who doesn't. Derek knows what he is talking about. Like, I don't mean just a 50%, six, I'm talking about 180%. He knows exactly what he's talking about. Okay, that's all I'm going to say on that. Okay, like he, he really knows what he's talking about. We are not talking about them being saints. Like I said, the lower echelon of the movement are normally good people. They honestly believe that the movement is about helping your neighbor. You go past that, you go past that, that's when things start to get shady. Okay? We are talking about the higher, the higher ones. Okay? Okay. Now. Now. Um, Derek is in, no, he's in the Facebook chat, but it's, he's probably on my page versus the tell it like it is. So. The symbolism is there. They talk a lot about doing good in the lower realms, but then when you get uppity up, up, okay. So now that we have their basic history out of the way, where people normally would go with this is how many people are involved with the Freemasons, whose hands are in what, and that's where I was originally gonna go. I really was gonna go diving into who has what hands on. And, and, and then, this morning I wake up and I'm going back into it and I started off with the symbols, right? And I realized that the, the Masonic symbol has a link to a satanic symbol. And that's where my first inclination was going to go run that down and see how far if there's any connection. I was thinking maybe the symbols would lead me to a, a connection. The symbol didn't lead me to the connection. What led me to the connection was a trade. The trade brought me to a very crazy connection. And the connection is a direct connection to Satan himself. When I mean direct, I mean direct. Direct. Remember me telling you about how the devil will use the things of God to direct you to himself as opposed to directing you to God. Like he'll take what was like the fruit, right? Adam and Eve. It's good. Don't worry about it. It's it's gonna make you like God. Don't worry about it. Have the fruit. Even though Eve knew, you know, even though Eve knew. He will take simple things and skew them just enough for you to not attribute it to God himself. Even if that means, even if that means you don't necessarily deny God's existence, but you deny his power and influence on life. 
Hey, Nikki. Again, look, if you have a hard time hearing me, just say you have a hard time hearing. Or if you're so stuck in wanting to be right that you're not listening, feel free to say that out loud. I literally said this is not being sexist or misogynistic at all. So stop with the BS, okay? You're going to get me upset. And you might be a friend, and I don't want to lose a friend, but if you're not going to listen to me and misquote me all the time, then don't be here. This is dead serious stuff I'm talking about. And you don't know what you're talking about because you're not actually talking about what we're talking about. It has nothing to do with you being a female and not knowing anything. It has to do with you being a female and not being allowed into the realm of the Freemasons. You're not allowed in there. You, a female, no females are allowed in the Freemasonry. So no, you do not know what you are talking about. Okay, you don't. You can read every book you want. You can research all you want, but you are not allowed into the realm of the Freemasons. And I'm telling you, Derek knows without saying what I need to say, he knows what he is talking about. If you cannot understand what I mean by that, then something is definitely wrong. He knows what he is saying. Why am I saying that without saying what I'm supposed to say? Call it a safety net measure for my boy. He knows what he is talking about. This is not sexist. It is factual. You, a girl, can never, ever, 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 ever know. You won't. Because you're not allowed in there. And when I'm telling you, I get firsthand information from somebody who knows. And I'm telling you to listen to him. And you're continuing down this line of me being sexist. And it's because you're a female, then you're obviously not listening. And if you don't want to listen, fine. But understand that your comments are not going to be worth anything because you are not listening. It, it, it won't help if when people bring real information to you, you trust what you believe and it's a lie and like that lie because it fits what you want to believe. It doesn't help you. It does not help you. I am not being sexist. I am not being misogynistic. I am being factual in what I'm saying and I'm trying to get to you the information you need. What you've been told about the Freemasonry might be partially true. Yes, they have their hands in everything, but it is the upper echelon. And I'm not talking about the lower people, one, two, three, or four and five. The people in the Freemasons are indeed crazy. I get that. But I am not trying to make the correlation about why they were crazy and how they're influence over the earth is i'm not going into any of that i was but i'm not anymore because this is what this was something that was brought to me directly this morning and i have to touch on it i have to touch on it they picked the masonry thing the masonry thing for a very specific reason. The devil did. The devil put this in front of the first person and was like I said, we don't know when their first origins were. But he specifically put the Mason as the linchpin for their movement. I'll tell you why. If you're at all familiar with the Bible, if you're at all familiar with the Bible, you will understand the significance of one particular item and that is a stone there is a very special tie to stones in the bible not just any stone there is a specific tie to hewn stones specially cut stones 
like those that would be cut by someone knowing what they're doing, a mason. And not just knowing the importance of the cut of the stone, but the placement of a stone. Naming of a stone, the type of stone, where do you begin building a building with stones? He constantly mentions in the Bible about buildings made of stone. Jesus being the cornerstone, Peter being the rock. Stones being incorporated into the wall of heaven. The paving of the street. All of it, stones. Ironically, the Freemasons have taken all of the archetypes of the stones and put it into a movement that completely negates the true God. They will tell you, you can come as long as you believe in any higher being. We can mix any religion we want, but we're following some core tenets a little bit of the Bible. And we just happen to pick stone as our linchpin for the movement. We just happen to pick stone. I'll give you some examples of how they uh, mix and matched the stones. Number one, I told you to keep in mind the Masonic pavement. If you look at the Masonic pavement, this is it, okay? The way to describe it, <clears throat> the floor of the Masonic Lodge is made of mosaic pavements, okay, and they herald back to King Solomon's temple's flooring. It can be traced back to the 18th century. It actually goes back a lot further than that, and I'll tell you why. According to French Masons, a mosaic pavement educates members that they were once part of a fraternity that bound people together. Make sure you keep that in mind. Hence, the pre-existing bonds should be maintained and strengthened. Okay. Now, if you correctly remember, I'll show you something that might trip you out. It might trip you out. Do you want to know where else this particular concept comes from? And I'll show you how they. When I, when I tell you this popped out so, so much this morning. Now, this, the ephod, multiple stones in the chest plate of the priest. Stones in the chest plate of the priest. Put together in a pattern for the 12. Now, it just so happens that the pattern is almost the same, except with a slight variation in the floor. It is an archetype. It is a direct archetype. They know exactly what they're doing. It is not by accident. It is not by accident. Various stones put together. The 12 tribes. But if you can usurp it and make yourself a whole new thing out of it, you win. Because people are not going to look at it. It is a symbol of care and providence. Masons are taught that it's a pillar of comfort and blessings which show members the importance of relying on the divine providence of God. Okay, the divine providence of God. It is not just 
enough for the for Satan to bring small things and put it in your way. He has to use the big things that God has used for his own. He has to use that and make it his own thing. He has to take you out of the realm of what God wants and puts you into the realm of what you want. The all-seeing eye. When God says he can see you, there's no place you can hide. You cannot hide from the presence of God, right? In Psalms, where can I go from your presence? If I hide in the mountains, if I run to the dark, the light says, the dark is a light to you. Okay? <laughs> they now give you something called the all-seeing eye. So you can now worship a symbol of it, not God, the symbol of God. And it's not really God himself. You can achieve the all-seeing eyes potential as well. You can have that foresight. Many are confused as to what the G stands for. There are many schools of thought about the G. It means God. Um, it means God. Um, there's another thing to do with it, grid or something like that. Anyway, there's all kinds of reasons as to why the G might be. There's no set consensus on it. Um, so, back to what I was saying. The concept behind the whole thing is way more nefarious than just control of governments and control of man and all that stuff. It's usurpation of heaven. If you think the devil has stopped just because you might think, oh, God's won and eventually he'll won. You don't think, you think Satan's going to take that L and just move along? You think he's just going to take an L and move along? He's not going to just take an L and move along. His goal is to take as many people, and as if he can confuse a few, he'll do it. Number 33, yeah, it's another one. The age Jesus died at. A symbol of Satan's victory, supposedly. <laughs> the number three has very big significance. It rose on the third day. But like I said, you have to look a little deeper. The walls of heaven, myriads of stones of various types, multiple expensive types of stone, precious ones, the dimensions of the walls, all masonry dimensions. If you're not getting what the real the real attack on this is you, you, you're losing it. The Freemasons are more than just a movement that go and put their hands into governmental and conspiracy theories. It's more than that. It is more than that. He has taken, he meaning the devil, has taken all of the symbols that God put in place to represent himself and has taken it upon himself to put it in the hands of man. They are free masons, which means we can do whatever we want with the stones. You think there's a reason why there's no, they think it's a coincidence that there was a huge stone that was rolled away from in front of the sepulcher? You think there's some kind of odd reason that they were burying people in that kind of tomb? stone tomb and that the Freemason just happened to be the ones thinking about stones you think that's random you think there's some odd reason why people like the Pope have taken it and the, the bat and, and the Catholic Church talking about oh Peter is the rock that's the foundation of the Catholic Church really you take you take a man and you say that's the foundation of the Catholic Church Peter, when it specifically talks about the cornerstone being Jesus, 
You think that you don't think that's weird? You don't find it odd. You don't find it odd that they take the one profession that has the one or in the Bible that always seems to lend to a foundational aspect of life and has taken it to hand it off to man. If you build your house on sand versus you know, solid ground, rock, stone, it matters. It really does matter. Am I telling you that the Freemasons are good people? No, at all. At all. Have they had their head? Look. The earliest demise of somebody going through the Freemasons was in 1740 or something like that. One of their guys fell away from the graces of them, and all of a sudden he just disappeared. He died, but no one, they couldn't find him, never found his body. He just disappeared. Just disappeared. Nobody knew where he disappeared to. Yes, they've had their hands in people unaliving themselves. They had their hand in Nazi Germany. They had their hand in every takeover. But like I've been telling you, this has nothing really to do Okay, if I need to push a narrative, if I need to push a narrative, I have to have influence. In order to get my influence, sometimes I have to do things to put people out of the way. I'm not going to even address you anymore. Okay, we're not we're not addressing you anymore. We're not addressing you anymore. Believe what you will, Regina. Believe what you will. Anyway. I used to think that exposing the deeds of man was the important thing. I was one of those. I do still believe we need to show the deeds of people. I do. But I do believe we also need to see, more importantly, what they're trying to do. Not just what they do, but what they're trying to do. <laughs> and not just who, in terms of the man side of things, but who's behind it in terms of the spiritual realm. And it's the devil. Just plain and simple, it's Satan. He has his hands in more things than the Illuminati does because he is the Illuminati. I took a look at a couple of things including the symbol um, that compass. And thanks to my, my friend in the chat room there, he uh, showed me a, a book. The book was called The Rites of Lucifer. Um, And I wanted to, you to see the, uh, the symbol. Okay. <clears throat> I want you to see the, the, the symbol. Now, that symbol right there. Does that look familiar to you? Does that look familiar? Now, mind you, this is on YouTube. This is on YouTube. Encouraging people to come and read the book with the incantations of Satan. Do you see that bottom symbol down there? That bottom symbol is... Uh, 
Looks an awful lot like a different symbol we've seen before. Doesn't it? Looks a bit uh, familiar. It kind of looks, kind of, like this. Their symbolism is crazy. Welcome, Tanya. It is crazy. They have a basic, basic grounding in satanic symbolism. But don't understand this. It's not really satanic symbolism. It's symbols that the devil has taken for himself. Granted, he has a few that he's had for, you know. But the majority of them, he's tried to usurp. Okay, look at, look at the rainbow. Okay, he's taken that to, to mean the homosexual movement. It was never his. Stones, never his. All of these symbols that are now associated with the devil, he has taken for himself. Taken them. It's his now. That's what he's saying. But right, right there in front of you, with the introduction of you to someone like the Freemasons, they're telling you right off the top that the devil is in charge of this movement. Which means anything they do after that point is satanic. I don't care. Look, did you know that you can go to the devil in that book, that Lucifer Wright's book? You can invoke a demon to come help you with your finances. Did you know that? Did you know that you can actually ask Satan to bring you money? You, you know, that's considered helping, right? It's considered help, right? That's helping you. It's helping you with a caveat because you give up something to get it, but you get help. So telling me that the movement could be about helping people does not make your movement any more good. The devil will help you too. He, he will help you. He will help, oh, trust me, he will help you. He will help you to like, avoid God. He will help you to avoid heaven. He will help you all the time. So don't tell me that just be, look, the Vatican helps people all the time too, and they're filled with satanic symbolism. The Catholic Church helps all kinds of people, and they're steeped in Satan. The entire Catholic Church is steeped in Satan. How are you going to have a building in the shape of a serpent and call yourself a god? Come on, people. Come on. How are you going to have a, a, a symbol of a, a, a satanic symbol on your head and then want to lead people in prayer? To who? Who are you praying to? Who are you praying to? You go kiss the ring of a man? Calling him father? You, you don't find a problem with that? You, you don't see a problem with that? Holy Father, you call it? Are you insane? Are you insane? God literally told you who he was going to put as your intercessor. And it wasn't the Pope. It was not the Pope. The Pope is not my intercessor. I do not need that, that cultish man leading anything to do with me. The same way I do not need the Freemasons. Nobody needs them. They are trying to put the evil deeds of Satan in front of you as something positive. We help people. Look at our little temple here. We just come, you can help people, and you can join up, blah, 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 blah.
You understand me? But it's deeper. It's all deep. Who has ties to what? Who's been in what? It is all in an effort for Satan to have his way on earth and take as many people as he can with him where he's going. And he does it so calmly and so methodically. He's not dumb. He is not dumb. A snake is very cunning. Very cunning. There are snakes that will look like a twig. Heck, I've seen a snake that has a tail like a leaf and it'll just float around inviting its people to come. And then, you're dead. There are some that are so big that when they wrap around you, they just squeeze of ever living life out of you, but it's very slow. And every breath you take, you take an inhale and it just tightens again so you can't exhale. Tight until everything around you is just done. A snake is a very cunning animal. It is it is no surprise to me that he picked a snake to go beguile even. It's not a surprise to me. So when man comes to you and tells you, I have something for you. We are called the Freemasons. We know what we're doing and we're here to help you. There is such a thing, yes. Um, and you can pray for that to be broken, but that's a whole other topic altogether. We will have, we'll have a different discussion about that. It has not infiltrated the Catholic Church. The Catholic Church started as satanic. I'm just going to let you know right now. The origin of the Catholic Church is satanic in its origin, not its infiltration. In its origin, it's satanic. It never will, never has followed God. It has always put man as the head. It has never put God as head. Ever. It has given you the illusion. It has given you the illusion that it put God somewhere in there. Never started off as a God following religion. I would venture to say that along the lines of evil corporations, the Catholic Church is right up there with the Illuminati and the Freemasons. Period. I said what I said. In the words of my friend Jam and Lou. I said what I said. This revelation that he gave me today was so insane of how they using the one pillar foundational item of God and has handed it off to man. He also realized here that the numbers three and seven are symbolic in the Bible. Meanwhile, Lucifer's number are four and eight. Four and eight. No, understand me, I'm not, I'm not here to expose the Freemasons in government and tell you that this person's a Freemason. I don't know what good that's going to do for you, because if you don't know what the Freemasons are about, you're going to go with, oh, they're just trying to bring the, the end of the world. Yes, they are. They're part of it, because they're all trying to work for one guy who has his goal is to bring as many people to hell as possible. They're all working for the same guy. They are all working for the same guy. You ever wonder why the Catholic Church doesn't do very much about pedophilia? It's because they're not working for God. You wonder why the Freemasons cannot tell you to follow directly God because their goal is not that. Their goal is to make it seem that you can do all things for yourself. 
Yeah, you can believe in a higher power, and that's a prerequisite. They never tell you what that higher power is. Did, did you know that as far as the spirit realm goes, the, the devil is a higher being? Did, did you know that? Yeah, it's crazy. I just got a message. Let me check and see if I'm seeing right. You have to start looking at this in a more robust way. A very robust way. Very robust. This is larger. Larger than you know. I got to check something real quick. Hang on. Um... I have to ask you if you know how much the Masons have had their fingers in change the world of the Bible. Changing the words of the Bible. I am not talking about changing the words of the Bible. Okay, let me put it to you this way. And I get where you're going with that. I have all, and people have heard me before say this, okay? And if you, if you don't believe me, um, go back and listen to stuff I've said. You never just take anything you read or hear at face value. If the Bible are, is the word of God, right? That's what, and, but people say it's made man altered. And you genuinely believe that God exists. You have one of two options. Believe the book, books, in this conglomeration we call the Bible. Or if you have a problem believing that it's really him saying what he's saying and there's some issues in it, you have access to the author. That's if you believe what you believe. About. That's if you believe what they say about God. Now, mind you, if you've never had an encounter with God, Everything in the Bible will seem kind of suspect from the authors of it, the people who are in it, the stories in it, the, the prophecy, all of it you'll have problems with if you've never had an encounter with God directly. If you've never had a one on one session with God, I encourage you, I encourage you to, to, to encounter that. I, I encourage you. Again, Regina. Again, Regina. I'm going to ask you politely again. Because I'm trying not to let the old me pop back out. But, but uh, it's getting close. It's getting close. Do you understand the concept of there are some things people cannot say? Are, are you aware of that concept? For safety reasons, you understand that there are some things people can't say. It's not, it's kind of like when on too strong, we can't approach certain topics because we will get banned. And we are not about trying to get banned because the more we're banned, the less we can get words out. I have tried multiple times in this session to tell you certain things about my buddy Derek in as coded manner as I could. And you persist. You are persistent in trying to draw something out of people that we're trying to not say. Everyone else in the chat seems to get this, except for you. I, ev literally everyone else in the chat on both platforms is getting what we're talking about. Literally everyone, except for you. I don't understand that.
we all get where Derek is. But for some odd reason, you can't figure it out yet. I, I literally told you, I literally told you that he can't. Twice I've told you that. Twice. In this life alone, twice I've told you that. This is proof that you're not listening to anything because you have an agenda to keep up in your mind. You have in your head all the research that you've done is correct for you and you have to maintain. Oh, I'm not calling you a troll. I'm calling you ignorant. I said it. I am calling you ignorant. I am calling you deaf. Because if you can't hear three different times me telling you the exact same thing, Something has to be wrong with you if everybody else is getting it. And you can't seem to get it. I'm going to go out on a limb and say it's probably you. I have done all this research. I have done this. I have done that. What has Derek done? And I understand why you're doing it. I really do. You may not understand why you're doing it, but I understand why you're doing it. I understand why you're doing it. Trust me, I understand. I'm just asking you to not let him, let him do it to you. Do not allow him to get into your mind and block you from what we're trying to tell you. Okay, I'm just asking you to open that channel that's opposite of what you're listening to right now. The research that you may have done is all well and good, might be correct. But I'm telling you, I'm telling you that what you're talking about, you might, okay, you said you research. If you research, I'm telling you, you can find everything you need to know about that in one search. Literally in one. In one, one search, you can find it. Let me show you how easy it is to find it out. While I'm sitting here talking to you, I did a quick little search. Do you see how quickly? Do you see how quickly I could find something about it? Directly from them? You see that, right? How quickly I found that? You don't need Derek for that at all. You're harassing the man is all you're doing. And you may not understand that that's what you're doing. You may not. I don't know. You don't need his input on this particular thing. You really don't because it's right there on the Internet from the source. Every time you can go to the source of something you're trying to find out. It didn't take me but... 10 seconds to research the word you're asking about in a search engine, bam, it popped right up. It's right there. Okay, it's right there. So now that we have that out the way, you have your answer. Now, you don't need to worry about Derek anymore. We can move along. I gave you your answer. Look it in Google. Look it up in um, Duck, Duck, Go, Brave, wherever. Derek is my buddy, Christy. He's the one that really get me, got me moving in the right direction on this topic to begin with, because he's a wealth of information for a very specific reason. Now, back to what I was dealing with before the interruption. When the devil is trying to persuade somebody of something, they don't, he doesn't lie about big things. And maybe you should, Regina, or at least use DuckDuckGo, because that's where I use it. Try DuckDuckGo, okay? Go try it and come back. In the garden, did God really say, 
even with Abraham and Sarah, he used Sarah to laugh at a prophecy of God. She allowed Satan one glimpse into her life, and she was laughing. One. He came to even he went to Jesus. I can give you all of this. All you have to do is. You don't think that's helping? That wouldn't have been helping Jesus? He helps. But he also won't negate the full nature of God because he knows better. He knows that it's way too difficult to convince man innately that there is no God. Instead, he tries to persuade you that there is a God. It's just not who you think it is. It's you. You're the God. Just remember that there is a God. There is a higher being and you're it. Don't let some fanciful thing tell you that, you know, there's a God up there controlling your life. You control your life. You are God. And then he introduced to you movements. He puts movements in front of you. That will solidify for you that you are God. In your feeble mind, he'll solidify for you. Freemasons, the Illuminati, all the power. Meanwhile, he's the one controlling the strings. You're just along for the ride. The Freemasons picked the masonry trade by the devil's command for a very specific purpose, and that was to usurp God as head. And by doing that, they can convince myriads of people to do some very crazy things in the name of self-servitude. Case in point, I can cause you to kill somebody to gain more power and more access. He can convince people that, hey, you can gain more influence if you put your hand to this method of getting rid of people. His entire goal, his entire goal, remember that he has to bring about the Antichrist, right? Okay. So the Antichrist has to come up. In order for the Antichrist to come up, he has to have things under his blanketed control. So what better way to have blanketed control than to have a group that has the, uh, the, the mindset or the appearance of good, right? Has his power behind it, can bring even the most nice people to the group, convince them that the idea of God is a fallacy, but there is a higher power. He can convince you of all of that in the background doing what he needs to do, to bring about his own work. The one world government idea. He even has his hands in the so-called church called the Catholics. This is not about man. It is not about man. It is not about the Freemasons or the Illuminati or President Trump or Biden or all them crazy people. Get your eye off the fruit. Get your eye off the fruit. It is not about the fruit. We're talking about the serpent. Put your eyes on the serpent and see what he's trying to do. Recognize the serpent. God literally could talk to Eve and Adam. He could talk directly to them. Understand this. He can talk directly to them. They have had communication, constant in-touch communication with God himself. One-on-one -on -one in person, walking, talking. Adam could hear God walking. He could hear the voice of God walking in the garden. He could hear. Hear it. Do you know how close you got to be to hear that? 
And you, as a person who have experienced that, get encountered by a talking serpent. And instead of going to the source and asking, remind me again, did you say that I was going to die if I touched that? Because this guy is saying that I won't die and I want to make sure I'm not upsetting you and going against our relationship. None of that happened. Why? Because the serpent knew exactly how to put it forward. He didn't say God didn't say it. He asked it very specifically, did God say it? He's causing man to go against what he knows. He didn't try and force it on them. He literally asked Eve, did God really say that? Like in exact words? That's called planting a seed of doubt. It's a seed of doubt. And instead of going back to the author, she went straight into the Satan's arms and said, yeah, 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 you're right. He didn't really, really exactly say that. He didn't exactly say that. Which is why I keep telling you, do not just listen to me. Do not, do not. You can take what I say, take it in, file it away, and take everything I tell you to the author. Take it directly to the, do not take my word as gold. I am a man. Do not take my word as, please do not do that. I am telling you what he's told me. And I believe it was God that told me. Because of what connection I have with him. When I give that information to you, your job is to go to him. And this is a good trait to have. Go directly to the man and say, yo, I heard this. And this person said, you said. Okay. Is it true? Is it true? He will tell you. He will tell you. Go to the author. Some people will go to a priest and a pastor and, 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 and a friend and all this nonsense. Go to the author. Talk to the man up there. Him. Talk to him. If you don't believe that the Bible is in its purest form, if you believe that somehow that the Freemasons changed all the things in the Bible to make it fit man's reading, man's assumptions. If you think that somehow there are missing books in the Bible, if you think that it's all, we were all black, I don't care what you believe. If God be true and every man a liar, then take all of your concerns about what you feel you know to the author. There is a reason he's called the author and the finisher of our faith, because he starts it and he ends it. He is the beginning of it and the end of it. If you can't look. Okay, if you don't believe the Bible, say the, let's just start the most extreme. I have nothing to do with the Bible. The Bible is awful and the man wrote it. But you do believe in God. Ask God if what you believe is true. Ask him. You afraid to ask him? You afraid? And if he answers, are you listening? Are you listening? Wisdom can come from the craziest places. Wisdom can come from some of the craziest places. Like I said before, it came from a donkey. I'm not going because there's something in the road. And you don't see it, but I see it. I'm not going down that way. Plenty of children have given me sage advice. We are divided today 
because of our self-centered nature. We are divided today because of our self-centered nature. We want what we want, and we will try to make anything fit what we want, including God. We will put him in what we call the so-called proverbial box. He'll put, we'll put our idea of God in a box. Obviously, you can't put God in a box. It's not possible. You can feel like you might have put God in a box, but you're fooling yourself if you think you've put, put God in a box. You, you, you can't put God in a box. There is no box big enough, strong enough, lockable. Your version of God is what you put in the box. You basically put you in a box because you are now God. The instant you can make a version of God for yourself, you have become God. In your world, you are God. If you have a version of God that can't do something, if you go to church wearing a mask on your face while still saying he's a great physician, you lie to yourself because you're not following God. You're following some version of God that you've somehow been told or come to believe, but it's not God. I'm going to tell you right now, you don't follow God. If you can go to a church with a mask on your face because you're trying to protect yourself from something that you say the great physician can cure. And then want to look at me and tell me, oh, he would have wore a mask to the man touched lepers. He touched lepers with no protocol in place. N none. Do not give me that nonsense. You do not follow God if you have to go to church with a mask on your face. You don't trust the man. You have zero trust in God if you live in fear of a virus. You have zero trust in God if you live in fear of man. You have zero, zero trust in God if those things keep you from doing what you got to do. Zero. You go to church and you sing all this nonsense about the great physician and then you go with a mask over your face concern about something that the great physician can fix. You don't trust God. You distrust your version of God. And you trust your man-made version of yourself. Your version of God. You trust you. You want to know why many will fall to the mark? They don't trust God. You want to know why many will fall by the wayside and not go? They don't trust God. When he says, if I clothe the lily of the fields, how much more will I care for you? And you don't believe that? You don't trust God. You trust a version of yourself that you call God. A black church and a white church. You don't trust God. You trust yourself. I got to listen to what the government says. No, you don't trust God. Stop trying to put these other names on it to try and avoid the reality of what it is. You don't trust God. Partially because you don't know him. You don't know him. I heard that. I heard him say that too. And he's a, a true clown. Like the, the truest of the true clowns. If I can't trust my God, to protect me. And if, okay, here's the best part. Even if he doesn't protect me that way, even if I die of COVID, even if I die of the Illuminati wiping me out, even if I die of the Freemasons killing me, even if I die of the government coming in and kicking in my door, even if I die, what is my downside here? <laughs> what is the downside? What's the downside? Come, come on, tell me the downside of dying, knowing God. What is the downside? Okay, I, if I trust God and I die and I leave my family behind. Trust in God doesn't stop with me dying. Did, did you know that God doesn't have an end? And, and my family is still here under his protection? Did, did you know that? Did he know that he will not allow one of his people to suffer? 
in that way to the point where we lose faith in it. You know what the real suffering happens is when we lose faith in God. That's when real suffering starts happening. A trial, a travail, it might affect you occasionally and it might affect you temporarily. But when you really have a faith in God to the point where, pfft, man, look, even if I'm going through all this, that the earth is putting me through this, that fallen life is putting me through this, you know what? I still have one thing consistent. I still have God consistent. Like, I think we put this, this, this hinging on our relationship with God on good things happening. When things go well, our, God's favor is on me. And when things go bad, I must have either done something wrong or he's taken his favor away from me. That's how we equate relationship with God. And it directly affects how we communicate with him. So when things go bad, I don't reach out to him as quickly. Or if I do, I reach out to him in anger. And when things go bad, I still don't reach, uh, things go good. I still don't reach out to him except once in a while to say thanks. And then I just go along happily because things are going well. Not that in good or ill, I'm always in the same type of communication with him. Do you remember that Shadrach, Meshach, and I'm glad you brought that up. That Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were for days prior to the furnace in communication with God. For days prior. They were in days prior. They were always in communication with God. They didn't just step into the furnace one day and decide, oh, look, a fire. Are we going to trust God now? These brothers were in constant contact with God the entire time before the trial showed up. So when the trial showed up, and this was a true trial, they could walk into that fire and be like, <laughs> fire. <laughs> You, you really think fire is going to stop my God? Really? Re really? Fire? I right, bet. Let's go in. Let's go in. Come on, put us in. It's okay. We're good. We're fine. Put us in. Do what you got to do, homie. Do what you got to do. It's okay. I already talked to dad this morning. I talked to him and we are good to go. We are good to go. In fact, I talked to him uh, like the whole week this week. He's been prepping me for this the whole time. He's been prepping me the whole time. Do you imagine how amazing that is? Do you not know how amazing that is? That we can have a God that will prep us for the most insane trials ever. Standing in the middle of a furnace, a human sized furnace. I knew the furnace was big enough for them to walk around inside of it, right? <laughs> A big enough for us to do that. Stepping on hot coals inside this thing and not a scratch. Do you see why the devil has to keep us distracted from what God can really do? Do you see why he has to put us in the realm of we can do everything for ourselves? Because the instant we start depending on God, we realize how much power the devil doesn't have. The Illuminati. The Knights Templar, the Freemasons, the Cabal, the U.S. government, all of them are a distraction. All of them are a distraction. And all of them are taking symbols that God has put for his knowledge of, for us to know him, they have tried to take for themselves. And some of us fall for it. Some of us fall headlong into it. Headlong. Am I one what? That's a good question. What am I what? Am I one what? I'm not stressed over this life anymore. I used to be very stressed over life. I used to be worried at every turn about what's going to happen. And how I'm going to eat the next day and how I'm going to function. And I used, like when I tell you I used to be stressed, you can ask my wife. I've lost weight. I've lost sleep.
lost it all just worrying. And it did nothing for me. Because in doing that, I'm serving two masters. I'm serving two masters. And if you believe the Bible at all, at least it's, you know, veracity. If you have any kind of vested, you know, interest in it. <laughs> if you believe it's true or not. Like I said, talk to the author. I, I believe that some, the things that are in there are from him. But that's just me. I talk to the author about things I don't understand. And he's no one can serve two masters. Either he will hate the one and love the other, or he will be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve both God and mammon. It's more than just money. Okay, That's the love of pleasures and the love of the life that you live. That's more than just money. Therefore, I tell you, this is, what, this is the biggest one he's ever revealed to me. Therefore, I tell you, do not worry about your life. What you will eat or drink or about your body or what you will wear. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothes? Is not life more than food and the body more than clothes? Look at the birds of the air. They do not soap or sow or reap or gather into barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much more valuable than they? I don't recall him sending his son. To die for birds or for dogs or for the bald eagle or for some animal that's going extinct or on the endangered species list i do not recall him sending his son for that but he did send him for me and for you and no freemason no illuminati ever gave anything up like that for me Not once. Not once. So like I said, this eventually came out to be something else. My initial thought was going into this saying, oh, I'm going to expose the, the traits and the, the rooms of the Knights Templar and all these people and the Freemasons. I'm going to show everybody what the Freemasons are about. How many places they have their hands in government and he, he wo I woke up this morning with that intention and then he just said no 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 that's not what I want you doing nope it's bigger than that Marlon Brown it's bigger than that and it is it's much bigger than that If you find a conspiracy theory that shows what the government is doing, understand that behind that conspiracy theory is the devil trying to get you off your game of focusing on God. So I have a question for you. Do you trust God to be a winner in spite of the government trying to kill its own people? Do you have faith in God despite the world government's trying to create a one world government. And will you trust God when it's time for them to put the gun to your head and say, deny God or die? Are you there yet? Are you at the point where when they finally bring in the who to say, take the jibbity dibbity dibbity dib dib HVAC or don't eat or don't participate in commerce or don't travel? Are you at the point where that you can tell them, bring it on. I got my pops in my corner and he's never let me down yet. Are you, at, are you at that point yet? Are you in a place where you can tell people, hey, you know, even if I tell people all this stuff and it still comes to pass, I am good. I'm good. I ain't got to worry about it. I don't have to worry about 
not eating the next day. I don't got to worry about not worrying. I don't have to worry about any of it. I don't. The reason I don't have to worry about it is because it is not for me to worry about. <laughs> it, it just isn't. It's, it's not my calling. It's not my calling to, to, to worry about it. I'm not worried about it. I'm not worried about it. Who of you by worrying has added a single hour to his life? Not one. Not one of us. I think that's why I'm more prone to being able to stay calm these days. It's because I'm not in a place where I have to be concerned about what people think or believe. I gave information that I get from him and I pass it on and you get to verify it with him. And if you don't, then you can live in fear. There is coming a time where you won't have the Bible. I'm telling you now, there's going to come a time where they'll confiscate that. And even if it, so it's best, like he said, to hide it in your heart. Know the Bible inside out. And I don't mean the stories. I mean, know what the, the whole point of the Bible is. Know the point of the Bible, the reason for the Bible to begin with. Re reason through why you think you have those words in front of you. It's more than just instructions of what to do day to day. That's more than, it's more than that. If you really read the Bible openly, you'll realize that it's all pointing you to reasonly go through and talk to the man, the author yourself, get to know him, and he will make everything else clear. So even without the book, even without the books, even with the missing books and the poor translations and all that stuff, you can directly talk to the man and get your answers. Like, straight up, just talk to him. There are people that have been more in tune with God that never touched the Bible. Why? Because they had an actual encounter with the author. With the author. And some of us have the book, have the books, have the knowledge, and never encounter the author. <laughs> Go talk to the author, please. Go talk to the author. And let the people that don't believe in him don't believe in him. That's up to them. But you keep talking to the author. Keep talking to the author. This whole concept of the Freemasons is evil in its origin. I get that. <clears throat> and it's evil in its execution, and it's evil in its outcome. Factual. Known. Which is why it's so imperative to know who God is. You won't be blown by every wind of doctrine that comes your way. You'll be held, anchored, because you know the person that all the doctrines are about. Pretty cool stuff. So I'm going to lie, it's pretty cool that he allows that to happen. So, that's my spiel for today. Um, I know some of you may not have, it may not have gone in the direction that some of you would have wanted it to go. But like I said, I, I try, I try to leave a lot of room open for when he has to do something different. Sometimes I'm not even looking for him to do something different and he'll pop in and say, no, 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 no. We're not doing that today. We're doing something else. And he has done that on multiple occasions. Where I have this grandiose plan to say something and then he says something completely different. And I'm just like, oh, 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 oh that's, that's much better. Yeah, that's much better. So for those who needed to hear it, I hope you listened. For those of you that have doubts, I hope you take it to the author. And for those of you who are planning to go join the Freemasons, have fun with that. <laughs> Um, I'm not going to try and stop you. You make your own decision about your life. And um, 
you'll tally up at the end. You'll have to tally up at the end. Because come, come the end of all things, you, you better hope you pick the right path. You, you better hope you pick the right path. You only get one shot at this. I have to bring this up because it's at the end of the show. Um, thank you, Regina. Um, my goal has never been to berate people or belittle them. And I hope you don't think that's what I was trying to do, but I was trying to make you consciously aware of what was going on in your speech and where the devil was trying to take you. And you may not have seen it being him, but it was indeed him. And I thank you for your apology. To the room especially, not so much to me, I don't need one, but to the room. Thank you for that. Um, if you guys have questions about this live, about where it went, like I said, you can ask me, yeah. Um, I'm going to answer Joyce out loud as opposed to in the chat, okay? I just have to because I think I need to. Um, the question was, I got asked, and I'm, going to, I'm sorry, Joyce, but I have to. It's a good thing, not a bad thing. Um, is it okay to call God the Father, my pops, or the man? Uh, yeah. Yeah, it is. Um, I'll tell you why. For me, it's not something you do. I'm not telling you that you should do it. Okay? For me. Um, I called my dad Pops from time to time. I called my father Pops. I called him Daddy and I called him Dad. I never called him Father. Um, and every time I called him Pops, there was something that gripped deep, like it, I don't know how to explain it, but because of the connections I had with my dad, when I called him Pops, it was like this, this deep connection I felt with him to the point where it was like, I could feel my love for him and he could feel it for me. So when I attribute that same term to God as my pops, for me, for me, it's the same exact type of connection. I'm not saying it in a form of my old man, and, but he is the man. He is the man. By all colloquial terms, he is the man. He is the OG, the head honcho, the big man. He is the one and the only. Any term you can take, except for the goat, I wouldn't call him the goat, but he is the man. He's the king, the commander, the chief. Pop, daddy, dad, father. There's a connection to him. I don't think the words are disrespectful and I don't think they're belittling to him. I think they're quite endearing because of what the connection you have with him is. And he'll make clear to you whether or not you can use these things. You'll feel a twing in your soul to not do it again. But I think the bond is what creates the ability to say certain things with him. Um, so yeah. I don't think anything's wrong with that. Again, for me. So. So there, that's my answer to that. <clears throat> so um, I might, uh, we'll be back. Uh, I think it's tomorrow I have a, um, a show again. I want to reply to her real quick.
Um, I think I have a show tomorrow. That's fine. I forget. I, I, I have to keep keeping track of these things. And uh, my Tommy Morrison one is, yep, it is for Friday tomorrow at 10 a.m. Um, the Tommy Morrison show is tomorrow. Um, and we will be talking about what they tried telling us before about how they're going to handle truth speakers. And uh, it'll be a good one. Again, like I said, keep your eyes out on the distractions. Um, um, I want you guys to understand that, you know, I said today that it's not so much about what people are doing, but I have to tell of you what they're doing as well. Because if you don't know what they're doing, then you're not going to know how to navigate and to see what's coming. They'll tell you what's coming, and then you can navigate it better. So, love you guys. Thank you for being here today. Um, I was a data technician, kind of. I was a low-voltage electrician for a long time. Long time. Why you ask? No disrespect, but I don't want to take any glory or honor from the name of our King of King and Lord. That perfect. That's what you call him. I have no problem with you calling him what you like. I said, your spirit will tell you what you're comfortable with. He will make it clear to you in your own connection with God, because each of us has a different interaction with the man. Each of us has a different interaction with God. Paul and Peter were not the same people, like at all, at all. Peter and John were not the same people at all. John and John the Baptist were not the same people at all. David was not the same as Abraham at all. Abraham was not the same as Job. Each of them related to God in a completely different way way completely different so you have your connection and your relationship with god you do that as for me and my my dad we have a different connection we're all talking to the same guy <laughs> all talking to the same guy If we all were the exact same, you wouldn't have a need for the story of Jonah. <laughs> you remember Jonah? Jonah, he called Jonah. Remember he called Jonah, right? He told Jonah directly, I'm sending you. And Jonah was like, uh, no, no, you're not. You're not sending me. I'm not going to them people. No, no, sorry, God. Now imagine telling God no. Remember, he told God no. And God said, ah, oh, really? No, bet. Oh, you want a boat? Oh, oh, you think you can run from me on a boat? Man, you a slow learner, bro. You a slow learner. Okay, get on the boat. Uh, cue the winds, please. And the storm. Yeah, cue the storm. Thank you. Okay. Man, whose fault is this? I think it's that dude, man. He running from God. He's running from who? From God. Kick that man off this boat, please. Just get him. I don't want to die with this. Kick him off the boat. Kick him off the boat. Fish. Spit him out. Now, go do what I asked you to do. Man, go do it, man. Just go do what I told you. Fine, I'll go. Now he's going to do it reluctantly. Arguing the whole way. You know, like a five-year-old that you tell him to come on and we ain't getting no candy. And he's trying to leave the store and he's throwing a tantrum, but he's still going. But he doesn't want to go because you didn't get him to That's Jonah, right? Gets to the place. Hey, hey, repent, 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 repent. All right, good. I'm leaving. Leaves. Okay, now, God, burn him up. I never told you I was going to burn him up. I, I told you to go, go tell him about me. But burn him up. They're no good. I'm just going to sit here and wait. And the sun, despite myself, I'm going to do it. And God's looking at this man thinking, Bro, this is what I got to work with. You know what? Fine. Here, here's some shade. I know, I know where you're gonna end up, so I'm just gonna 
I'll be with you here. You know, hang out. Saves Nineveh. And creates a deeper connection with Jonah. You may not see it. Created a deeper bond with Jonah. Jonah found a deeper bond with God. You know, sometimes adversity and sometimes reprimand can create a deeper bond. Yeah. So always listen to them. Always listen to them. Talk to them. Verify. Verify, verify, verify. It's not going to be just cut and dry with what you hear. You go to a service on Sunday and the preacher says something weird and you're like, hmm, I wonder. And then you go try and verify it with the Bible and you're still confused. Verify it with the author. Go to the author first and he can direct you to any verse that he might want you to go to. Don't go to the Bible first. Go to him first. and Then he'll direct you to. Trust me on this one. This one you can take to the bank. If you hear something, don't just double check it against the Bible. Literally, take my word for it, don't just double check it against the Bible. When you hear something crazy, you go, and I mean post haste, go directly to author. Go to God. Take that issue to him directly. I heard this. Can you... Verify this in my spirit for me, please. Best way to get an answer ever. Best way to verify ever. So thank you guys for being here. I appreciate the consistent crowd of 70 plus people. <laughs> you guys have a good attention span in spite of my long windedness. Um, I'll have a great afternoon. I'm going to go now and prep for tomorrow's show. And I'll hopefully see you guys there at 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern Time. Um, and if you have not subbed to my YouTube channel yet, please go do that. Um, I could use the subs being popped up over there and get the views going so I can get monetized over there. That'd be amazing if you can. If you have not subbed yet to my YouTube channel, go do that. I drop little shorts on there once in a while to keep things light. <clears throat> Love you guys always, and I hope to see you tomorrow during the show. And Too Strong will be back. What's today? The 19th. We will be back next weekend. So before the end of the month, we will be back live again. Um, by the 30th, I think, is when we should be coming on. I think. Don't quote me. Don't quote me. Um, we're trying to let one of the strikes fall off so we can stay active. We don't want to get shut down fully and then have to restart from scratch. You know how YouTube is. Um, we have to play it cautiously, play within some of the rules. Um, yeah. Because the devil is a busy man. <laughs> My mom used to say. Y'all have a good afternoon. Love you. We'll see you next or tomorrow morning at 1 p.m. Eastern on Tell It Like It Is and on Facebook. As I will say, wisdom calls to you from the street. Please, please, please find wisdom. Peace.